So the question is, how has Penn State improved from 2022 going into 2023? Everybody's going to say Drew Aller taking over for Sean Clifford at quarterback. But actually, the answer should be a stronger offensive line with an even better running game by Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. My name is Zach Seiko. I am your host of the show, and I am joined by arguably the best guest I'll ever have on this show. Oh, I don't know about that. The, the voice of Penn State football and men's basketball, a college football and college basketball savant, an expert in all the other sports. You can hear him Monday through Friday out in Sunbury on WKOK from three to five for a live radio show. That is Steve Jones over on the other side. Steve, thank you so much for coming on my show because I, I owe you everything for <laughs> when we were together at ESPN Radio State College and just getting into sports talk media as a whole. So thank you for doing me yet another favor. <laughs> oh, you're one of the best people I ever worked with, so it's a great pleasure for me. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. You make every moment more by visiting FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And Locked On Nittany Lines, your go-to podcast for Penn State rivals. Visit HappyValleyInsider.com for all the latest as recruiting gets going. But this episode is going to be very much devoted to the outlook of the 2023 team. I know in the summer recruiting is the most important thing, but (laughs) these guys are are working hard. They're working out and they're doing everything right. Of course, the lift for life is coming up this week. So there's all these, all these events for Penn state football as they gear up for September when they take on West Virginia. And Steve, I think the, the place we start is Drew Aller is, everybody's talking point to begin about this Penn state team. Uh, I I know that that's the simple answer. Okay. Why is, how is this team different in 2023 as opposed to 2022? Everyone's going to immediately say drew Aller, Uh, Sean Clifford gave his heart and soul uh, over the past, you know, how many years, right? We've lost count, but he was still a good quarterback. Drew seems to be the guy that's going to lead Penn state to that next level. But how do you believe, and from what you've seen, where is Penn State truly improved as a whole uh, in this team in 2023? Well, he'll be the focal point along with, you know, and let's face it, Bo Perbule is going to push him uh, mm-hmm. to me. But you have a more experienced running game now with Nick Singleton and with uh, Katron Allen than you add in Trey Potts. Uh, I think the offensive line should be better. Because I think people forget that, you know, the stretch run that they made starting with the second half of the Ohio State game was all done without Olu Fashionu uh, playing. Uh, Hunter Norzad's moved over to center. Landon Tangwall did not play after the Michigan game last year. So they played the final, uh, what, six games of the season last year with 40% of their starting offensive line not playing. Uh, and I think people forget that, which I understand because you just go a, a week by week basis. But Drew Aller is somebody who has a tremendous arm. I think what he showed in the Purdue game was something that uh, is the most important element, I think, that he'll bring to the table. And that was he showed poise. He was thrown into a situation where it was in the balance. It was early in the second half. And he came out there and acted as if he was running the two-minute drill in an August practice. Uh, And I think that's what impressed everybody about him, was the poise that he played with. Because poise is something you don't know until you're actually thrown into it. You can see all the natural attributes that he has. you know, The great release, how the ball just looks different coming out of his hand. Uh, The way he leads receivers in. But the one thing you won't know or would not have known is what happens to be his uh, poise level when things are tough. And he showed that right away in the Purdue game. I mean, he didn't think he was going to be playing that game. And all of a sudden he's out there and he's playing and he was effective 
But at the same time, he impressed everybody by the poise that he kept along the way. He's a different kind of leader than Sean is. Uh, Bo is more of the kind of leader that 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 Sean is. Uh, people forget in the spring that he operated without Dante Cephas. He operated without Tyler Warren. He operated without Theo Johnson. So in the spring, he didn't operate with all the weapons, quote, he's going to have during the course of the uh, – upcoming season and i think that's going to be important because the defense is really good and they haven't they will have the ability to make this offense better and it's it's what's always interesting about the blue white game is everybody saw the blue white game they're like oh defense oh well defense was like that and on tuesday leading into the blue white game the defense played like that but on thursday leading into the blue white game the offense was better you know, that's that's the advantage I have of seeing that stuff, yeah. right? So it gives you a little better perspective in, instead of a one, two-hour glimpse. Yeah, iron, sharpen, iron sharpens iron, literally, right? In the case of the defense is going to make that offense so much better, even though there might be inexperience to just to keep it simple uh, in, in some spots. You brought up the leadership aspect. Penn State, if I'm not mistaken, is going to have all new captains going into this mm -hmm. season. Yeah. It is difficult to replace, not only in terms of on-the-field production, but off the field, on the sideline, in the mm -hmm. huddles. P.J. Mustafer, Jair Brown, Sean Clifford, Chris Stoll, just to name the few. Mm -hmm. So what is the personality like? Who has really stepped up that you can share in terms of the players that are taking on and assuming that role of being that next line after head coach James Franklin and the coaching staff to guide these guys? Uh, Theo Johnson certainly would be one on offense. Um, I think between Drew Aller and Bo Perbula, those would be two more. Caden Wallace and Olu Fashionu would be leaders on the offensive line. Um, Elena Tangwall has a chance to do that as well. And then, uh, Keandre Lambert Smith at wide receiver, Devon Ellis, without question, with the defensive tackle group, uh, Adisa Isaac. I would think that between you know, and Curtis Jacobs is such a terrific player that you know Jacobs doesn't get enough credit for how good he is. Uh, and then we'll get into that maybe in a little bit here. And I think in the secondary, guys like uh, Keaton Ellis, without question, uh, and also. Uh, I think Kalen King and with the special teams group, I think it's going to be Tyler Jasansky. I mean, that's, I think all those guys, look, they, everybody's going to bring their own style of leadership to the table. The 82 leadership was a little bit different than the 86 leadership, which was different than the 94 leadership, which is different than the 05, 08 and 16 leadership. They all bring on their own personality and it has to fit the kind of team that you have. And I think that, the leadership they have fits the kind of team they have. It is Locked on Nittany Lions, the voice of Penn State football and men's basketball, the perfect expert when it comes to talking about <laughs> this 2023 team, is joining the show here. Before we get to specific position groups, of course, everyone's interested in defensive line, particularly tackle mm -hmm. the interior wide receiver with the official addition of Dante Cephas and maybe some other surprise breakout players at other position groups. Before we get to that, let's hear from our sponsor of today's episode, and that is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays, they're all here, and there's no better place to bet all of that Major League Baseball action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That is right, $1,000 in bonus bets back. If your first bet does not win, all you got to do is just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. You can cash out your winnings at any time. That's personally my favorite feature. And you can bet everything when it comes to Major League Baseball. You think Aaron Judge will hit a home run? You think Max Scherzer goes over on his strikeouts? Justin Verlander, do you have a sneaky money line pick on an underdog team? You can take any of them. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss your chance at that. No sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on that is fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more make every moment more with fanduel an official sports betting partner of major league baseball 
And again, thanks so much for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen and watch every single day. Got to check out Locked On NBA Mock Draft Special. That is Locked On's NBA Mock Draft Special. And it's here and it's bigger than ever. You can follow along the entire first round and a six-episode Ultimate Mock Draft experience. Only Locked On can deliver. All the episodes are available now on Locked On NBA Big Board on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Steve Jones, the voice of Penn State football and men's basketball with us. And in the second segment, defensive line wide receiver, maybe some other, because I think safety is another position that is definitely going to go through a change in identity. I know Keaton Ellis was there, but I'm glad you mentioned him because I know that his leadership has stuck out. When you hear from the coaches and you start putting names and you hear where the consistency lies. I've heard Theo Johnson from select players, Mm -hmm. Drew Aller just did a podcast recently with Adam Brenneman, and he brought up Theo Johnson. When Mm -hmm. you hear from Chuck Losey, for example, he gives media availability. He brings up the likes of Keaton Ellis. Mm -hmm. So it's consistent when Steve Jones says it as well. From uh, an actual on-field production standpoint, Mm -hmm. I I get all the time, and, and this is common, whether it's it's strictly commentary among college football pundits, people who are actively involved in message boards. Just the discussion seems to be that Penn State doesn't have enough size on the interior of the defensive line. They're they're not going to be good enough. They're not going to be able to handle the likes of Michigan, Ohio State, because they're too much bigger than them. Where does the interior of the defensive Mm -hmm. line stand with you from your perspective, Steve? Well, let's start with Devon Ellis, because I've been a big Devon Ellis guy for a long time. And I think this is now going to be his opportunity to shine. He is unquestionably the leader of that group. Mm -hmm. He is somebody that is over 300 pounds. Uh, He's got that McDonough attitude that you love to have. Uh, You know, they have four McDonough guys on this on this team a year ago. Uh, And he is somebody that I think will be the starting point there. Getting Kazai Izzard back, who did not play at all during the mm-hmm. course of the spring, getting him back will be important. He's been around the block, and when he's played, he has played well. Akeem Beeman has put on more weight, uh, which is, you know, and the key with putting on more weight at any position is do you lose any quickness when you put that weight on? He has not. So he's put more weight on. So he can use that added bulk to go with the quickness that an offensive lineman needs to deal with. Uh, you know, if, if, if I'm, uh, if you're big and I'm a little smaller, I'm quicker and you're not. And that's what, you know, their hope will be uh, with him there. Uh, then you have Jordan Vandenberg, who's really a strong, powerful player. Uh, he got bumped up during the preseason last year. There was a lot of hope as to what he could do last season, but then he got bumped up in the preseason and it kind of knocked him out for a few weeks. And then they've added in Alonzo Ford from Old Dominion. Yep. And Alonzo Ford from Old Dominion, I think, is very good against the run. He's very good against the run. And that will really help. Uh, you know, against the pass, you know, based on what I've seen, he'll need to improve that part of it. But I think he's an important addition there for them at that spot. And then, you know, we'll see what some of the younger players can do. But then you've got Chop Robinson you, on the outside. you got Adisa Isaac. you got Denai Dennis Sutton, who was unblockable in the spring. And if you thought Denai Dennis Sutton was unblockable in the spring, you got to see Chop Robinson. <laughs> and then you got to meet Vanover. And uh, me and Vanover will will uh, uh, change numbers. He's going to wear 15 this year. I mean, that's that's how the defensive line is going to shape up for them. And then flip it over to the other side of the ball, wide receiver, because, sure. yes, Nick, Nicholas Singleton, Katron Allen, now Trey Potts in the fold. I think that running back room is as deep as it's ever been, at least mm-hmm. in my recent memory. I know sure. Saquon Barkley, Miles Sanders uh, had control of that. But when you think mm-hmm. about it, there's – Trey Potts can start at a lot of other places and he's going to be the number three back Mm -hmm. in this rotation. So the conversation doesn't need to be about them because they're solidified. The offensive Mm -hmm. line is solidified. Wide receiver has question marks just because what are you going to get out of Dante Cephas? Is there that second or third year player in the program that hasn't Mm -hmm. really made a name for itself yet, but now can take that next leap? 
wide receiver, we know tight end. I, I think tight ends can even be factored into this as well because their pass gets yeah. Theo Johnson and Tyler Warren absolutely tore up Brenton Strange. Tore it up in the Big Ten. I think of the Minnesota whiteout game last year when Theo Johnson and Tyler Warren were as effective as they were. But wide yeah. receiver, does Dante Cephas come in and become that number one option for, for Drew when we see Bo Prabula in certain packages? Uh, is there anybody else that Penn State fans should be aware about when it comes to wide receiver outside of Keandre Lambert-Smith and Trey Wallace? Because that's who James Franklin has named time in and time again throughout spring practices. Well, let's start with this. I, I think a lot of people forget that as a wide receiver, you're competing with the tight ends. Right? You, I mean, because if Penn State feels that their best options happen to be Warren, uh, uh, Johnson, and Khalil Dinkins, and Dinkins had a really good spring. I mean, that really helped. You know, the, those two guys being out gave him more time, and he played really well. So the wideouts are competing – in those four wide packages with the tight ends. And do you put out one tight end or you put out two? Uh, now, as for the wideouts, Keandre Lambert-Smith is, to me, now a given. Uh, he is now transitioned from, okay, let's see what he can do to being a given. I thought the way he played the final month of the season then played the bowl game, he's a given. Trey Wallace, I thought, was the best receiver for Penn State during the spring. He played really well. The last 10 days of the spring, Amari Evans really came on, and I was really impressed with how he practiced, and then it came to fruition in the blue-white game with how he played. Dante Sivas is not a take-the-top-off kind of guy, but he is a precise route runner who will fight like a dog to get the ball. Uh, you put the ball at the high point, he'll go get it. You put it over the middle, he'll take it away from you. Uh, he is exactly the kind of receiver they needed to get into this offense. And there's no question he's a part of the mix right away, and he becomes an important option for Drew or Bo to have moving forward. And then uh, the other guys all have talent, Zach. They just need consistency. Right? You'll go along, you'll see one, two, three plays in a row, then the fourth play like, oh. Right? Then you'll see one, two more in a row, and then you see, oh. They need to be more consistent. So that means Malik Mega needs to be more consistent. A lot of talent. Malik McLean out of Florida State. I, I think being here in the spring really helped him. He has the talent. He needs more consistency. Uh, you look at Anthony Ivey. His problem has been staying on the field. Uh, when he finally was on the field consistently, he, he played very well during the course of the spring when he was on the field. And then there's Liam Clifford. Liam Clifford is one of those guys that I think is, uh, I think has an excellent shot at being within that six to seven man rotation of wide receiver and being a part of it right away. I think he of that group, he's the mo more consistent of that group I just talked about. But that's where the preseason will come in. You'll find out on a, on a play in and play out basis who the more consistent guys are, they'll be the ones that will emerge. Because the talent's there. It's just the consistency you need to make those plays play in and play out. And that's where, where the best have come into play at Penn State. The guys like Chris Godwin, he was always consistent, right? I mean, when you watched him play. Uh, Deshaun Hamilton, always consistent. Now, a guy like Saeed Blacknall was not, right? And then when he had those great days, it made a big difference. So, you know, that, that's what you're looking for, consistency. The, the first four I made named are all consistent. The next level of consistency is Liam Clifford. Then, and the other three guys I mentioned are guys that, that have all the talent but need that consistency. Locked on Nittany Lines is your go-to podcast for Penn State Rivals. You can check out Happy Valley Insider at happyvalleyinsider.com for all the latest when it comes to Penn State football. In this final segment, Steve, let's continue with that idea of breakout players for Penn State. If there's any other position groups that you think are worth mentioning and names that come to mind. And then special teams because Penn State has a complete makeover when it comes to kicking, punting, long snapping, mm -hmm. basically sure. – Basically everything except yeah. kick return. Uh, yeah. But those those breakout candidates for Penn State, everyone wants to know who's that next superstar. And I'm not saying declare somebody a, a superstar in the making right mm -hmm. away, but who's somebody that had a limited role last year that will definitely see a, a, a significant change in playing time and could, with those opportunities, make the most of them? 
Well, let's see. When you have like guys like Kalen King and Johnny Dixon, you know, you feel pretty good about what you have at corner. Mm-hmm. But Penn State rotates its corners. Yeah. So a young corner, you know, and Daquan Hardy is somebody everybody knows about, but a young corner named Cam Miller, I think, has a chance to be a breakout candidate in a more expanded role this particular season. When you go to safety, I think you know, a guy like Keaton Ellis he is he is a given. I think Jalen Reed is a given yeah. as the as to the way they play. But a breakout candidate back there is KJ Winston. Uh, Winston is out of central casting. The way, you know, I want a safety. I need him to be X tall, X weight, and cut, and this kind of speed. And so that's KJ Winston, and he is going to be, I think, an impact player for what they're going to have this season. I think a lot of people expect Tony Rojas as a true freshman, the way he performed during the spring to be a potential breakout candidate uh, for Penn State. Uh, I think when you look at the at the offensive line, we've talked about Olu. I thought Caden Wallace had himself a really good spring. Uh, it may not have shown a couple times during the course of maybe the blue-white game, but I thought Caden Wallace got a lot better, and he and Sal Wormley on that right side are going to be important. And you move over Hunter Norzad, who's going to go to center. And I think that will be one of the more important moves. Puts a lot of size at center, and I think he has the ability, obviously, to handle it, and I think he'll be really good. So those are some of the guys I think that have a chance to break out. I thought they did a great job in the transfer portal. Um, you know, And I was talking about defensive ends earlier. Well, actually, I want to talk about actually about Curtis Jacobs for a moment because yeah. everybody will talk about Abdul Carter. Yeah, and I wonder why. <laughs> Carter is something he's something else. He really is good. But Curtis Jacobs can play all three spots. Mm-hmm. You can put him out at the field area, right where he's he's out there in space. He can blitz. He can play the run. He's really good against the pass. He is a three down, every down linebacker. And I think the presence of Carter takes a little bit off of, you know, it kind of takes some pressure off him in some ways because here's a fourth year guy who's really good that everybody acts as under the radar. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're around, yeah. if you're around football, you don't think this guy's under the radar. He's a really good football player. Special teams, Dzanski to me is the given uh, because I think I've watched Tyler snap now for a couple of years, and he's really good. And he he's got ready. into games. He, he snapped in games last year. I mean, eight times to Hadick, uh kicked a field goal last year. Stall was the holder, and Tyler was the snapper. Uh, so he got into games last year, and I think he's going to be just fine there. Uh, you know, the holder operation should be fine. I have no problem with, with what they want to do there. It's going to be a question of who's going to be kicking the ball. And I okay. think that's going to be a wide-open competition. So Hadick, Alex Falcons, uh, the transfer out of Columbia. Um, and I think when it comes to punting, that's going to be interesting with Alex Paquetta, Riley Thompson, and Gabe Wosu. Uh, Thompson out of Florida Atlantic is another guy that quietly came in. And I think that's going to be interesting. I think in the first two weeks of the preseason, we'll determine who gets those critical spots because you want to be able to, you know, part of special teams is the ability to change field position, Mm -hmm. the ability to get points on the board, to do it consistently, to have some range when, when you do it. And I think the first couple of weeks of the preseason will be very important to find those spots because those are not settled at all coming out out of the spring. But then again, I didn't expect it to be settled out of the spring because everybody gets a fresh start in the first week of August. Yeah, good competition's better than no competition, I would oh, say. Yeah. It's it's to make it's to get the best guys on the field and that they're pushing one another. Uh, so I'm glad at this point in time we don't necessarily have an answer to the the kicking part of it. Uh, the receiving part, we know that Nicholas Singleton, Katron Allen are going to be used in a variety of ways when it comes to kick off, punt return. That that really is – there was so much stability at least over the past few seasons because you had Jahan Dotson and then mm-hmm. naturally you transitioned to Parker Washington. It seems like wide receiver mm-hmm. is the position of choosing 
for that punt return spot. Is there any inclination who might have the lead on that punt return gig for Penn State this season? Uh, let's see. Not not really at this point. I think they just they'll, they'll let it play out. There's the three or four guys they put back there to see if they could. You know, number one, the most important part of fielding a punt is catching it. Being able to field it, yeah. Okay. After that, <laughs> so, so I think that'll be a little more wide open going in. Uh, but I think they'll settle on somebody probably pretty early because I mean the guys I watched fielding punts during the course of the of the spring were all doing a really good job, and I, I don't have any. I had no issues at all watching anything there. I kind of felt that was that was a pretty comfortable part. I thought the kickoff part was a pretty comfortable return part was a pretty mm-hmm. comfortable part. So I don't, you know, I think they have options there, and I think they have a lot of good options. Steve, I this was very insightful. I hope the listeners and the viewers got as much out of it as I did today. It kind of. Again, I've used it already in the podcast, solidified what we know about whether it's the running backs, Mm -hmm. the offensive line, Mm -hmm. especially because it seems like almost every single year, Penn State fans, people that talk about Penn State football, Mm -hmm. I have to argue again why this year's James Franklin team is going to see the best offensive line in his tenure. (laughs) And we might be having that exact same conversation again in 2024. Uh, Depth, because, I mean, you know, know, when Drew Shelton is thought of uh, being a backup, that's yeah. pretty good. Nick Dawkins is thought of as being a backup. That's pretty good. You know, and I, you know, they've got some young players, you know, that I think they can go eight or nine deep on that offensive line of guys that can play. And I think that makes a big difference. And this is also going to be another big week for Penn State because the NBA draft is going to be on mm-hmm. Thursday. And I expect both Seth Lundy and Jalen Pickett to get picked. Uh, I think they'll both get picked in the second round. I think Seth will get picked before Jalen does, but they're both going to be second round picks. And at least in my tenure of doing this, Penn State's never had two guys drafted (laughs) and they've never had two guys drafted in the two round NBA draft Uh, in the two round NBA draft era. Penn State's never had two drafted. And I think they're going to get two drafted, albeit on the second round on Thursday night. So I'm, you know, I'm happy for both of them because Pickett was somebody who came out of high school with no offers. Yeah. Right. He had no offers. So he went to prep school and then he went to Siena, proved his medal there, said, I can play at a higher level, ended up being a second team All American. And I've watched Seth Lundy grow from day one here. And he has had an NBA style game for a long time. And he really wowed everybody at the combine in Chicago. And I think those two guys are going to both end up being second round picks on uh, Thursday night. And I think that's pretty cool. This is quote unquote, the off season for you, Steve, but you truly never do have (laughs) time off because you're calling spikes games for the state college spikes uh, up near Penn state. And then of course you do your live radio show on WKOK and Sunbury from Mm -hmm. three to five every Monday through Friday. So what we're going to go. We're going to one to three starting on Monday. So okay, okay. So yeah. in in a week, in about a week's time, you'll be moving from yeah. to to one to three. Uh, yeah. So what what can people expect with just how your how are your summer plans going with the spikes, the radio <laughs> show, and everything? Well, we got a six game homestand for the spikes are coming up on Tuesday night through Sunday, uh, and then uh, I. I you know, the 3rd of July is going to be a big fireworks spectacular. I'm looking forward to that. I'll do a game on the 4th of July at Williamsport. And then I'm going to, t- I'm going to take some time off. I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to go I on can't a believe that. For, I... for a week. <laughs> Fine. I already found a, a nice beach for all of us to go to. And uh, we're going to have a, a good time and a relaxing time and just put our feet up and just enjoy family time. You know? And that's, that's, the most important part, having some family time. We're going to have more conversations <laughs> like this one on Locked On Nittany Line. So stay tuned for all the latest new episodes. Steve, I really appreciate the time, the insight, and uh, being a helping hand on the show as a guest. And I hope that we can do this in the not-too-distant future. Thank oh, you. Anytime you want, Zach. Anytime for you. You know that.